Hey everyone, Ramel here and today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial video on how to use Docker on your Synology device to automatically download uh, content for your media server. I'm going to try to keep this video focused on configuration and how to set everything up versus where to actually get the content and how, um, but you're just going to need to be familiar with news groups and indexers. I'm also not going to go into too many details about uh, Docker, except that it's very, very useful and it's something that I use for work all the time and for my side projects as well. In this tutorial, we're going to be focusing on three Docker images, uh, SAB NZBD for the download client, uh, Radar for movies, and Sonar for TV shows. Uh, once everything is up and running, it should be pretty easy to get your content. Um, but the first thing that we're going to do is make sure that Docker is installed um, on your Synology. And to do that, you can just go to the package center and you can check to see if it's installed. If it's not, all you have to do is search for Docker and install it. I'll uh, give that a few minutes to install. While that's installing, uh, you can go ahead and create a couple folders. Uh, for me, I created this configs folder as well as this downloads folder that we're gonna use in the configuration. So the, once um, Docker is installed, all you gotta do is open it. And then we're gonna go look for those images. Uh, you go to registry. And the first thing that we're gonna look for is the SAB uh, NZBD. It should be the first one. I'm gonna use uh, everything from Linux server. Uh, so to do that, all you have to do is right click and download image. I already have these images installed, so I'm not going to download them. Um, but you can also download previous versions. Uh, but for me, I stick to latest on all of them. After that's downloaded, or you can do this at the same time, actually. Uh, you're going to want to do radar um, and sonar as well. Um, so once those are all downloaded, they're going to be in the image um, section of this Docker application. And we're going to start configuring each one of these. Uh, so we're going to start with the SAB NZBD. And to do that, you're going to launch it. So this doesn't actually start um, the container. Um, this is setting the configuration for it and the settings. You're going to click advanced settings and you're going to want to enable auto restart. Uh, for the volumes, we're going to use the folders that we created here. Uh, so for the first one, we're going to go configs. I'm just going to create a new folder called configs2 just because I already have all of that in there. And then in configs2, I'll just create another folder um, for this. and then select it and then this is the mount path is just going to be config uh, so when the container is running the path in the container for config is going to be pointing to this uh, this path on your actual device and then um, downloads will do that and then mount path will be downloads uh, you don't want to hit apply. I, I, did, I did that a lot when I set up my old images um, and that will close this and you're going to have to open it again. It, it saves automatically. Uh, for port settings, I don't remember the exact range of ports, but I'm going to use, I'm going to do 8.1 here and I'm going to do 8.2. I'm just going to increment each of these ports as we set up uh, each of the other images. Um, it's just that if this restarts and it's set to auto when your server restarts and these containers start up again, it's going to have a different port um, and you're going to have to go into the container to see what port it was assigned. But if you specify them here, then you can just write them down or bookmark them and this won't change. Another thing that we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to add a couple uh, environment variables. Uh, the first one is time zone and mine is just Vancouver and we're going to need to add PG ID 
as well as um, PUID. And to get these two values, you're going to have to SSH into this server. If you don't know how to do that, um, you can use PuTTY on, the, on Windows. And on Mac or Linux, you can just use Terminal. Uh, but you need to enable SSH access first. And to do that, you go into Control Panel, um, Advanced Mode, uh, Terminal SNMP, and you just check off this Enable SSH Service. Um, you hit Apply, um, and it'll update. And then you're going to bring up uh, Terminal. Uh, for me, I use iTerm2, but you should have terminal itself and it'll just look like this you can just hit this and then type um, terminal and to SSH into the device you do SSH and then the username mine is admin and then the IP address and that is 192.168.1.5 uh, for me and then when you do that, it's going to ask for the password. I just have that in Dashlane, so I'm just copying that um, right now. And then once you're in, you should see admin at DS918. And to get those IDs, all you have to do is type ID and then hit enter. You're going to want the administrator group, so that's 101. And then you're going to want the UID, which is 1024. Super easy for me to, to remember. Um, so you're going to add that here for PGID. You're going to use the admin value, and that was 101. And then for PUID, that was 1024. So we're going to have to do this for each one of the containers. So just write this down or memorize it. Uh, we're going to hit Apply. And then we're going to hit Next. It'll give you a quick overview of the settings and then you're just going to have to hit apply and it's going to start running this container and you'll see that it starts running here uh, these are the ones I already pre-configured but I want to show you guys how to do this from the start um, so we're going to do radar next and to do that we're going to do the same thing we're going to hit launch we're going to go to advanced settings enable auto restart so when your server um, restarts these images start up back up again uh, for volume for radar um, we're gonna have um, the same thing we're gonna add the config folder um, so configs configs to create folder um, this is radar so I'm gonna just name it radar um, select config um, and then we're gonna add a folder here uh, downloads uh, same thing slash downloads and then we're gonna add another folder and that's gonna be movies and just slash movies here so once the movie is done downloading um, it's gonna get moved into the movies folder so if you're using Plex and you're watching uh, this folder you just hit refresh and it'll pick up your new movies um, So we're gonna go to the port settings um, for this we're gonna Increment the port. I think I used um, Three two seven eight Three Because the other one was eight one eight two so eight three and the same thing here, we're going to do TZ for time zone, America slash Vancouver. And then we have the PGID, which is 101, and the PUID, which is 1024. We hit apply, next, and then we're going to run the container. And the last one is sonar, so we're going to hit launch. Same thing, advanced settings, enable auto restart, volume, add the folder, config folder, um, inside configs2, we're going to create uh, sonar, and then mount path is slash 
config and then here same thing we have downloads slash download and then we have this for our shows port settings uh, another port uh, port settings we have three two seven eight four um, and then we add those same environment variables here America slash Vancouver and we have PGID 101 and PUID 1024 we hit apply oh some of this local port is three two seven eight four apply next apply and we should see these um, containers running now so we have radar um, the sab nzbd and then we have sonar um, so we can check to see here you can see if they're the logs um, and you can also access the terminal directly if you want to turn commands for this container um, but to get to set up uh, sab nzbd you're gonna go into your just make a new tab um, 192.168.5 um, and the port was 32781 and it's gonna go through a quick wizard uh, here's your server details um, but once this is all set up so once everything is once you connect to your usenet server um, this is what you're gonna see um, the one thing that we're gonna need here is we're gonna need to go to that press the cog go to general and you're gonna need to get this API key we're gonna use it to set up radar and um, sonar so that's all you need for um, the sab and zbd so after getting the api key we're gonna go to we're gonna set up radar next um, and to do that all we do is we go to three two seven eight three um, and then you go into system or sorry you go into settings um, you're gonna add the download client and that is the sab nzbd we're just going to give it a name nzbd host is 192.168.1.5 and then the port is my old uh, the one that's already running 773 and the api key and then we just hit test and then it'll say testing succeeded um, the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to add an indexer you're going to need to add an indexer um this is where you actually get the nzb files and what actually downloads the content i won't show you that um, but once you do that you can add your movies and it'll once you hit download it'll start downloading it um using the sab nzbd and then the last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna configure sonar and we just do the same thing make sure the port three two seven eight four um, and then that's that and then the same thing we go into settings download client we add the sab nzbd uh, give it the same name 192.168.1.5 um, and then the port was three two seven uh, seven three the api key test test was succeeded and then the indexers same thing you're going to need to find an indexer to use but once you have that all set up you can just add a series and then you can download episodes or entire series and you can also set up sonar to automatically download new episodes which is really really cool so you don't have to manually download it each time once it's uh once it's in the indexer It'll automatically download and then you should be able to access it on your Plex device.
anyways uh, that's gonna be it for this tutorial video I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that if you have any questions uh, feel free to leave them in the comments below I don't want to go into too many details on the gray area aspects of downloading content um, so try to leave as much of that out in this video but hopefully you can figure it out that's gonna be it for me this week hope you guys enjoyed that peace